welcome everyone in Zoom and in the room. And we have uh, posted the agenda in three places and on the website. And it looks like we have the Zoom access straightened out. And so we can move forward legally um, with this here meeting. And we'll start off with the minutes from the um, prior meeting of September 12th. And I think that that had everything in it that I remember. Any changes on you guys saw? No, sir. No, um, so no. I'd move to approve. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Okay. Got those. Um, it says we might have Vic and Catherine as guests, but they're not here right now. I would think that they're... I have Vic. Oh, you have Vic. Okay. Yeah, sorry. Yeah, sorry. Yep. Okay. Um, yeah, Vic, do you want to speak to, to the letter of select board support for the high school repurposing project grant proposal? Yes, thank you. And, and Catherine had an overwhelming caseload and couldn't be here tonight, but uh, sends her regards. Um, there's a, a legislation, legislature funded agency called the Vermont Housing and Conservation Board. And within that organization, they have a program called the Rural Economic Development Initiative. And they uh, provide grants to uh, organizations, municipalities who are seeking funds to get larger grants, basically. Um, and so uh, we've been in discussion with uh, Mariah Noth, who's the director of that program, explained what we're looking to do. And uh, she felt that uh, uh, we would be a good fit for their program and invited us to apply for it. Uh, this would be a, an application on behalf of the town for about $7,000 for uh, grant writing assistance uh, to get a uh, 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 support for the high school project. So um, in order to do that, we need to obtain a letter of support from the select board saying that you support uh, our seeking this grant. It's not saying you support uh, acquiring the high school. Uh, if, but, right, if, but I, I have the letter here. It says this letter is to document that the Rochester select board supports applying for the REDI funds for the Rochester high school repurposing project. So it's not a commitment to buy the high school. It's just a um, letter of support. Letter of support and the ongoing for the efforts grant. for the grant. Yeah. Correct. Correct. Yeah. So um, I have no problem with the um, select board issuing that letter of support. How about you guys? Mm -hmm. No. No. Well, I move to um, um, sign and, and give them this letter. A second. All in favor? All right. Aye. Aye. Okay. Vic, have we had any response from Du Bois and King yet? Uh, nothing new that I'm aware of. Uh, okay. I know that I know that uh, Dick and um, the woman from the the state environmental agency were going to try to get together with Du Bois and King, and just try to get clarification around the issue of where the floodway in, intersects with the uh, the land around the high school. Um, I think there's been some miscommunication around what we're trying to think us. The surveyor has been talking about the flood plain, which is not really the issue. So uh, they're trying to straighten that out. Okay, because we do have the invoice that so we haven't released a payment yet until we hear that we have your approval so that we can give our approval. Yeah, that's that's fine. Okay. Yeah, hang on to it. Thank you. Okay. Thank you, Vic. You're welcome. All right, thank you. Yeah, yeah and the uh, ongoing saga. <laughs> you send that directly to the the woman and the uh, Mariah Noth. I think her address is on there. If you want to do that, just copy. Yeah, okay. just copy. Yeah. Thanks. In Montpellier. Um, Montpellier. All right. Yeah, I just can you clear something up for me? Um, is this is Vix and Catherine's committee? Is it an official town committee? Or is it a group of citizens who are working towards this that you guys are supporting? We formed it as a committee. Yeah, we formed it as a as a committee. So it's a it's an official town committee. Yes. I, I believe so. Yeah. Okay. So here's my question: Since this committee is pretty much directed at one uh, uh, objective, the the uh, community and cultural center supported by uh, uh, rents. 
Does the town expect to look at other options or examine other? Is this committee solely responsible for everything having to do with this subject uh, or not? Um, when the committee was first formed, we did look into uh, other uses for the building. Um, and then it, it just zeroed down into uh, the community center, the hub, uh, being the one most viable to research further. Well, would you say that decision is final, it's made? Uh, no, we can move my, on from there. My impression was that this committee started at, with the, re, uh, with the uh, Envision Rochester group, and they had a set of, and they had done some surveys and asked them, and they had sort of focused on this kind of thing. And that was pretty much what they pursued. So other options um, weren't really examined very deeply, as far as I can see. And so there are other, you know, for instance, other, it, 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 other options like affordable housing were all were already looked into and dismissed at that time um, because of the floodplains. So it could be revisited because since then we have heard rumors that it's possible to remediate some of the floodplain and put some affordable housing in there, but it sounds rather far-fetched. So we're still pursuing this particular concept uh, until it feels or deems that it's not viable. And then, then we will open up to a, revisit old concepts or new concepts. Okay. So you're going to uh, basically run the clock out on this one but although this could go it could take a tremendous amount of time for this project to raise all its money and to you know to keep the thing going um you know i i don't remember anybody ever really talking about trying to continue it as a school for instance if you put the elementary school into the high school if the uh su or the the district agreed to that and you and you put money into renovating the high school, then the high school would be available to be a middle school later. Or that instance, subject has come up. That subject had come up, but it's very quickly dismissed by the supervisory union. Hmm. Well, I guess what I'm saying, uh, these are just two ideas. Uh, or, or if you, if, for instance, uh, the demolition of the buildings always been described by this committee as creating a vacant lot when actually you could put housing on that if that were. But it's all these things are complicated. None of these uh -huh. things are easy. They're, none of them are easy. They're all very complicated. They involve multiple parties, tremendous amounts of money. They're all very complicated. So my concern mm -hmm. would be that we are setting our sights on one direction, which sounds like we are. And then if that doesn't pan out, then we'll go after other, but you know, it could take years for that not to pan out. But I don't, I don't want to hijack the whole meeting. I'm just, I wanted to clarify the nature of this committee, which I think I did. So uh, you got, you guys can carry on. Thanks. Okay. Right. No, nope. it's definitely a complicated project. Yeah, problem. But um, onward. Um, next on the agenda, we've got the uh, town office hours for the next week of October third through seventh. It's going to be Six closed. Six through seventh. Six to seven. Limited. Well, we've got um, on here. It's saying oh. Monday. The third will be closed, and Tuesday the fourth will be nine to five. Wednesday from nine to five, but it will be closed on Thursday and Friday. The sixth and the seventh. Sixth mm -hmm. and seventh, right? So it's for the week of the three through the seventh, but it'll be open Tuesday and Wednesday. Basically, is the summary, and I think that's posted on the door too. But I just want to make a public notice, and actually, we can do this. You can zoom on that for <laughs> sure. good, and then there it's you go. Monday anyway. Yeah. yeah, it's closed Monday. Monday yeah. anyway, but yeah, just to clarify. And the reason? Uh, two different. Uh, yeah. Both uh, Kristen has something going on, and I have something going on. Okay. That's not the same. But you're already married. It's almost like being married. It's not a fun day off. Two days off. All right. Um, we also have um, did receive a letter of support in for Sue Malton's. Um, it says Sue Sherman on the. Yeah, yeah. Sue yeah. Malton's about um, request about reducing the speed limit on North Hollow, and that was we had support from Peter Schneider and Gail Stockwell and Larry Levitsky and George and Lynn Maltz and 
um, um, Catherine Stern, Brennan and Fred Stern, and the McGraths, and Deb Roberts. That's um, it's not surprising that people would offer their support in that, but it's um, it's easier said than done. And um, Frank has been doing some research on what is exactly involved in in, in diving into a project like that. And we have I don't know if you want to summarize that. Um, not really. Not really. <laughs> but, well, it's um, but it's a it's a I can do something. It, it's uh, also going to be present here in the office for people to come and dig right. a little deeper into it if they if they want to. And we'd have to address every road differently and because they're dirt roads they don't recommend setting speeds on dirt roads at all but we've already done that with a blanket 35 mile an hour zone which is acceptable for most towns uh, but to change that to a different mileage would require a traffic study on every road that you want to drop down and and um, that would be hard to get a good sample because of the limited number of cars that you have. So it would take quite a lot to even come up with it. And the data would have to, to, to support the lowering of the speed limit. So it's a pretty big endeavor, uh, something that I'm not really, I don't really support, honestly. I mean, I like people to drive slow. I personally don't drive that fast on dirt roads. There was times when I did, but... Not normally, but anyway, I think it'd be best if we just not do anything with that at this time. Well, and that was the advice from VLCT from, also, isn't it? Uh, as advice from Two Rivers. Two Rivers. And, and there is a, a setting speed limits, a guide to the Vermont towns that's in the office here at town. If anybody's interested and they would like to read it, they can stop in and see what kind of a problem it would create trying to do that. So... You're more than welcome to come in and see that. Now, we have um, been working on drafting a, a request to the state for lowering the speed limit on Route 100 through the village. That's correct. I wrote a letter. I, we haven't finalized it yet. Um, the Windsor County Sheriff supports it. They're going to send a letter of support. Um, they feel it's, it's pretty... Uh, it's a pretty good idea to drop that down to 25 and plus with a new pavement i think it's really going to be a good thing to drop it down because i think cars are going to fly through town yeah. and because it is the village center and it's got a school and there's a lot of pedestrians around especially in the fall and in the summer it's it's pretty wild so um, be nice to get it done and and uh, two river supports that and also the sheriff. So I will put that out at some point soon and see what we can get. Yeah. Yeah. I would support it from the school to the firehouse mm -hmm. and have it 30, then 25, then 30, and then back up to 50. Have a progression instead of just well it goes jumping. it goes from 30 at mile marker whatever i wrote there which is right down 40. by the cemetery to that's the speed limit zone that we have now mm -hmm. that we can enforce through our ordinance in town so we have to change the ordinance so we'd have to get the mile marker numbers mm -hmm. from the school through but i don't recommend taking it from a 30 to a 40 it, whatever it is here now it should stay Right. If it's, it's 25 through the village, it should stay 25 through the village. Right. To the south, it goes 30 to 40 to 50. You're right. And that's that's <clears> fine. <throat> that won't change. Yeah, and that, that curve change. kind of enforces that to yeah. the south. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And people turning. Mm -hmm. um, so while you're on that subject, yeah. um, you were talking about Bethel Mountain Road at one point of lowering the... 50 mile an hour limit to 40 to comply with what is Bethel has. Right, and I've talked with Rita about that, and she's going to review the the traffic study we did this spring and recommend what we should do. And I'll so be in touch with her. In Bethel, they have rather large signs that are pretty obvious about the 24,000 pound limit. Right. State law says and whatever. Is there any thought about putting that over here on the various 
signs um, leading I, to Bethel Mountain. I don't want to do any more signage on the on the park than I have to. There's so many signs there now that nobody's going to read them anyway. And once a truck makes that turn, they're committed. They can't back up. The only thing they can do is turn around and go around the park. And that's and what they do. And sometimes, you know, mm -hmm. I've seen them come from the north and go by the turn and go down to the park and make the turn there and then make the turn and go up the hill. So yeah. I don't recommend it. I'm still going to uh, tackle the state on putting some I-89 signs up in what direction to go. And maybe we can deter some of that. But I, I'll be in touch with Rita more about changing that to 40 up there. And we'll go from there. Not well, is it thought also that if the speed limit is 40, that will show up on the, the GPS as a, a slower way to go and then right. defer some of the traffic that way too? Right. right. It also would reflect the condition of the road, not being a 50 mile an hour road. Mm -hmm. right. I would say it's not, not as big as Route 100. Yeah. But we have to do whatever the traffic study says. Mm -hmm. So that's what we're following. And that sign was placed, uh, the, the counter was placed right there uh, by Bindrum Lane. So it was kind of on the end of that route. It certainly wasn't going to be in a dip up there by <laughs> <laughs> Jay Mackin's tires. <laughs> down through We'd there. all flunk that test. <laughs> there are about 70 there. <laughs> At least. <laughs> yeah. I think Can I share a thought? Yeah. So I, my, I would only make a caution or a request that we, if you're going to put a change the speed limit, don't stop it at the school. Stop it at the south end of town by the uh, by the cemetery where the other sign is. By the cemetery. Uh, because people just blow through. Well, you know, they blow through here. Well, through. and that's where it is. It drops now, currently. That, right. That's where it goes, yeah. Rob. And that's the mile markers that I I am petitioning, or we're writing the letter to petition to the state. It's mile marker. Okay, it's mile marker uh, 4.72 to mile marker 5.60. Okay, thanks very much. Yep. All right. Um, still on the topic of roads, we've um, got a letter from Reuben Sherman, who is the trustee of the Sherman Family Trust, and he's been trying to sell parcel WH528 on and off for the past 20 years. This is a three-acre landlocked parcel accessible only by an ancient trail. This is up on Jones Mountain Road off of West Hill. Um, there is, um, he's, his request is that the select board reclassify the trail crossing the neighbor's property back to a road suitable and open to vehicle traffic. Um, that way you could um, more uh, possibly market the property. Um, talking with Bruce um, Flewellian this afternoon, he is, he's under the impression that is, that is actually a Class 4 Pent Road and um, still um, needs to do some GPS location verification with the, um, with the state to really determine that for sure. But that's, um, I think Cooter could help him he has the the capacity with his phone to take those readings and so um that would um if that is indeed a class four road then that that um there's there's no legal right to keep him from using that to access that property so i think that that would be the next step is to um identify identify finalize and identify that there's that, a gate up there, so right. legally you can't have that gate there. Well, you, a pet, pet road you can have, but you can't have it locked. You know, not that it's holding any wildlife right. up in there. I don't think that was from <laughs> back in the day. So, so we'll um, dig into that a little, little uh, deeper and, and determine exactly what the status of that is. Can I ask a quick question? Sure. Please. Um, so his request was for you to, uh, for the board to look into reclassifying the trail or whatever that goes in there to a Right, there but to a uh, what four. we're saying here is we're not sure that that's actually what it is, the trail, that um, um, there's this possibility that it, that is still a um, class four road and was never thrown up. It used to continue all the way into bingo, and there was 
that part was thrown up. But um, so, if I said that um, the, the the board is going to uh, look into the classification of the correct classification of the road accessing the property, would that be right? Or yeah, mm -hmm. we're going to clarify the classification. How about that? Okay. Okay. Thank. Thank you, you very much. Yeah, I you appreciate welcome. it. Sorry. Um, we also have a um, operation and maintenance plan agreement for the stormwater project at the town garage, and um, we gave a copy of that to Terry to go and get with Cooter to see exactly. Um, I didn't pay attention to the structures, but yeah, it's a ten-year thing. You got to maintain. Yeah, you got to sign papers on that. You know, yeah. it's, it's not going to be cheap. Yeah. Well, not, they're asking not at all. this, this act that they're asking us to, um, to sign now is not asking for any money. It's just asking for energy of, well, I guess that costs money. To, yeah, it does. Because yeah. it says after it gets a certain height, you got to have it Pumped back out. truck. Yeah. Sucked out. So, well, I mean, you're going to, you're probably going to, we'll have to see yeah. them. going to cost yeah. probably between two and five grand a year. Yeah. I know, and five years now, ago, it was budget. $1,200, so we, we know it's more than double. Right. Yeah, yeah so, that's so, why I said some of these grants you go after. Maybe you have you got to read the fine print. It wasn't in there. No. Does someone have a comment on Zoom? No. No, no. I just said we want to put that in the budget. So anyway, we're going to... Um, you're going to get I'll, I'll go down there and, and look at yeah. it tomorrow. All right. I'll, I'll go down with you so I get an idea, too. I want to make sure I'm right about yeah. stuff, too. Can you guys repeat yeah. to me exactly, excuse me, exactly what it is you're going to do? Because I was writing the notes for the other one, and I missed the yeah, beginning yeah. of what you were doing. Um, I apologize. We're, um, <sighs> Terry is going to um, get with Cooter and, and I guess Frank also, and down at the town garage to see exactly what is being asked for in the operation and maintenance plan agreement for the stormwater um, project down at the town garage. Okay, Which is so Terry Cooter and Frank will go to the town garage to see what is being asked for. In um, terms in of the um, maintenance and, and monitoring of the operation of the installed stormwater project. Yeah. Maintenance and mon monitoring of the newly installed project. Yes, that's got it. I remember when Stormwater they did the project. presentation on this, which was probably okay, thank you. Sorry. four years ago on. now. Yeah, yeah, they did that presentation. They said that we would need to vacuum it because it will accumulate cigarette butts and gum wrappers and things. Mm -hmm. So it's it'll need to be vacuumed sand. up and sand. So. Um, Seven on Wednesday. The more so substantial one tomorrow. will be the one that okay. goes in on the, the park on the other side of the fire department. That one will be even more substantial. There's one there? There's, There's one going there. to be. That's There's the third one. On the, that end of the park. This was only one of three that they want to do. Yep, we got some of the out? cleanest water in the... There's the, the, some of the cleanest water in the White River is right right here. Yeah. A lot of it because it's a national forest there. surrounding us. But yeah. Right. Yeah. Let it soak. Let's yeah. take it out. <laughs> oh, so um, is Tony on Zoom from the library? No. Um, we can take Joan's updates off in this. Yeah. I did the one. Oh, yeah. Just yeah. Followed through. Okay. Yeah. Um, in the highway department, I guess we already talked about roads quite a bit tonight. Um, I see they're building up the sand pile, and that is um, perched on top of one of the um, the uh, intakes for the stormwater. So that's one. Gonna, I think there's two of them they buried. Yeah, two of them. So that's so. So we'll have to discuss that yeah. Wednesday. Yeah. Uh, there, uh, John and I have been talking about. Well, uh, the better roads grants and coming up in mm -hmm. October and what projects he wants to do and he's thinking of that upper Bethel Mountain Road stuff there is probably where he's gonna look at doing stuff. So culverts. Yeah, there's a couple of cross drains there and the and the big one at Rogers Brook. 
that one he was thinking about doing that's you know that's been in the works for a while and then the only other thing that's engineered out there is a town line road mm -hmm. that big culvert. culvert there yeah but he's just looking at those that one on Bethel Mountain those two up there especially the one that had a hole in it a couple of years ago <laughs> he said, I don't know how long this event's going to last. <laughs> so I got a call from the, um, um, what's his name, the guy that bought the property up um, on South Hollow Road that had um, talked to us previously about the, um, yes. you know, using uh, the legal trail as a uh, uh, access to house he wants to build up in there mm -hmm. and he's um, not excited about the prospects of building a new road across well he still doesn't have any um, permission or access from Bethel Mountain Road and he's he expressed that he is wants to pursue asking the town permission to um, improve one of the legal a uh, legal trail for the access. I asked him to be more specific about whether he was talking about coming from above or below, which he could not say at the time. But um, You mean coming in from Larry Strauss's or yes. coming in from the bottom? Yes. From Jerusalem? Yeah, from Jerusalem. Yeah. Nancy? So, when you talk about reclassifying roads or improving roads, does the town get to vote on whether to, well, you, you can, dis, the town votes as to, to whether they to want to discontinue, discontinue a road. Right. Can they also vote as to whether they want to build a road? They can petition to build one, I think. And as I understand it from reading the Orange Book, and they can, um, but the select board has jurisdiction over classification, as I understand it anyway. But is it still, is it possible for the town to vote not, I'm not talking about the select board, right. but the right. voters I, to not I don't know for sure. I, I don't, I'm not sure. I think it's the legislative body though at, at right now. Except the legislative body, body has to take a discontinuance to the voters. Yes. Yep. But I think we can class reclass. I'm pretty sure. What and if we don't want question. to? Yeah, yeah, yeah. What if we don't want you to? <sighs> and you don't have to answer it tonight. No, no I'll, I'll look no, it up for you because it's probably right here in this book. It, this book has just about everything. We can discuss it. Yep. In the I'll, near I'll future. It. Yeah. I'll get it back to you. Anyway, I just brought it up as just uh, doing more information on that um, coming down the, the pike. Uh, but he didn't have the specific request that he was. That one court with Larry's going to cost him some. Yeah. Well, I could. I could tell you, I'm back to the, my original. I've been thinking about this and. I'm back to my original thought, which is, is if he's going to build a road out through there, you're going to use the trail, then class three it. Because if you don't, you're going to create a mess. Because there's two other landowners out through there. You got Larry as a landowner, but then you got DeSantis that has a 500 mm -hmm. acre chunk, and then you got the 700 acres. And if we don't, we're going to continually address this if we say you can have a driveway mm -hmm. or you can have a a class four road, then all of a sudden you've got three houses out there and then you've got, you're going to create a problem. And I know Larry's not going to like that, but I can't help it. I, I think that's the only way we can deal with that. If but, he really wants to go and if he thinks so that would be at his expense. Yes, sir. Yeah. And if he thinks that's going to be cheaper than building his own road, now uh, he might think different of that because mm -hmm. he's going to have to build that to specs and he's going to have to put in a pretty fair sized culvert on Rogers Brook, at least equal to the one we have to put up at the top. Right. Be so. equal to the one that's at my house, probably. Mm -hmm. Yep. Yeah. What's Without that, a, a three and a half, four footer, isn't it? Six. Is that a six? It was a three. Right, and they had upgraded. Right. 
What's the one that crosses uh, South Hollow Lane? <laughs> Not that's, that big. That's a four, isn't it? <laughs> I was gonna there's, say. Actually, there's two of them there. Oh, yeah? yeah oh, there is. it's a four and a two. Yep. I was wondering about that. I don't... <clears throat> anyway, that to be continued, and yeah, Nancy, look up that. And definitely, it's worth having input. Yep. Um, anything else on the highway you want to talk about? No. Not Can really. I just make another comment? Yep. Um, I came out of the library last Tuesday night, it was, when it had been raining a lot. And that when you step off onto Route 100, I know it's not a town problem, but there was a pretty deep puddle of water sitting there. What? And are we going to keep track of their paving to make sure that that, that doesn't continue? I'll, I'll talk with Tom. But there was a deep puddle uh, Tom that Chase we were, about that. It was wide, and we were walking it over it and in now. it. Well, yeah, and I'll talk with him, and, and I'm sure they've had some kind of... I've had a couple conversations with him recently, but he's he thinks that new part of the sidewalk we put in by the, the park house is going to be okay now. He didn't think so at first, but now he thinks it's going to be fine there. But this is up at the library. And, and up at the library, I'll, I'll mention that to him to see if... But the water sure. was like this right. when we came off onto Route 100. Right. Yeah, I'll talk with him about that to see if they're going to make it so that it flows out of there and not towards that storm drain at the Pierce Hall there. They're out storm... They're shimming them today. Yeah, I saw... Around them. the manholes and stuff because I had a conversation... Yep. Down by the bank. Between yeah, down, what happened when we, we hit that? We aren't done conservation yet. <laughs> yeah, yeah, speaking of the uh, utilities, yeah, what, what, um, that was... Yeah, we, we've had... I felt that in my living room when whatever hit that. I don't know, I don't know what hit it, but it definitely did a lot of damage. Yeah. And what happened? He you know, ripped the whole cover and ring and everything right off the top of the manhole. Yeah. There was a big hole there. So he got it patched now, but yeah, supposedly that other outfit's coming back to fix it. Did it damage the the, um, the structure? It, the cone it? didn't look like it was damaged. No. To what, me, what the is. heck hit it? I don't know. The guy today said a crane went over it and hit it, and which would sound about right. It would have to be something something heavy, really heavy. Yeah. Yeah. I said, I can't believe you guys left it like that to start with because it stuck up so bad. It did. Yeah. Yeah. It's out in the yeah. road, too. <laughs> because I said, that thing's always been a pain Yeah, I'm pretty pain sure I caught the, air on that at the fire call the other day. Pain in the butt, so. I told them I was going to be around when they got ready. Yeah. And I said, it's going to be fixed right way. They didn't work today. No paving today. They they shimmed. They up, shimmed they today. Shimmed yeah, up through the but, village. I mean, down. I don't know how far they went north, but down my way. Oh yeah. There's, there's some finished product down. Oh, there is. Dockbridge way. Yeah. Yeah. There's the first coat. Actually, one, one, one lane. lane. <laughs> one lane. <laughs> yeah. Mm -hmm. Nice. All right. Um, is um, Jeff Kippart online tonight? Nope. Anybody go to the Bethel Energy Fair this weekend? No, nope, they had a bunch of posters around. I didn't make it. So, so we um, on to the old business. We had the um, um, master financial policy sections five and seven, and you're saying that we have some new information that needs to be. I just want to look at the evaluated. Yeah, yep. Yeah. For yeah. the section five. For section five. For debt. Yep. Yeah. And then we need to do we need to send that to the lawyer to get his take on that? We still that? will, yeah. I yep. I will talk with um, a few people to, for editing and um, check with um, Jim may know because of the uh, new laws to see if that needs to be included in section five. All right, so I guess we'll table that until mm -hmm. he has a chance to to yeah, we're look still, that over. still reviewing. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Plodding through it, little by little. Um, any highlights on the, the August treasurer's report that you want to? It would be just our first um, treasurer's report for the fiscal year, so yeah. uh, you know, there's not a lot to show on it, but no. at least something for you to 
Nothing Start. that kept you up at night? Nope. No, nope. good. <laughs> nope. Good. Not yeah. yet. <laughs> Not yet? No. And we're starting budget finance meetings starting. Wednesday. Yep. yep. Wednesday, what time? Four. Three. 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 So Wednesday, three. I'm, a, I'm okay. Is that um, for the budget status? Do they have to sign off on that? Is that does the auditor want to see that they've reviewed it and signed off on it, or how does it need did, to? I'll be? have to ask Nathan. I'm not sure if that's just a review. Okay. Just show that you're reviewing it. Yep. This year, you mean? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Find out. We can review it and sign off on it, just in case. Yeah. Yeah, it's definitely something that he wants to see us doing and knowing that it's being reviewed. So. Mm -hmm. Cool. Okay. okay. Do we have um, any comment from the public on Zoom or in the room? It's quiet on Zoom. Quiet on Zoom. Well, uh, next meeting is on um, October 10th. Wow. Oh, wait, we have a couple other um, items I would like to... Um, this is kind of nice. We have a letter from John Lackard, who just wanted to send a note to express his thanks for including the John Lackard Blues Band in the summer concert series. It's been a really busy summer, and I'm just now starting to get caught up with things. It's hard to believe that it was July 24th. <laughs> it seems like just last week, my thanks to Joe Shankman and the town of Rochester. It's kind of nice to have. Our pleasure. Yeah, nice. yeah. thank you, John. That's yeah, very for nice. That going through there. Okay. Yep. And um, we have, as she puts it, a, a funny request from Maya um, that is has a program on the park next Saturday for kids. And as part of that, she'd love to do some leaf raking. Is it possible to let the leaves accumulate this week so that we can do that? <laughs> <laughs> you know what happens with the leaf raking? They make great big, huge piles, piles and leave and them there. Stay. And then they kill it. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> that somebody else has to pick them up, <laughs> but they're kids. They're kids, and we um, we should encourage it. We encourage her to can ask her to spread them back out after <laughs> they're done, <laughs> <laughs> or rake um, them up and take them home. Right. Yeah. Put them in big bags Compost. when you're done and leave yeah. them there. Right. I don't know um, how much mowing is going to get done in the rain this week anyway. No, it's pretty pretty wet. Yeah. It's through Wednesday, right? Yeah. It actually held up better than I thought it would this summer. What the park? park yeah. Yeah. No, it looks good. It held up better than I thought. It's good. It had it's enough rain, so the grass has grown pretty good everywhere. So yeah. yeah. It stayed pretty it's good. The lime. Well, the lime and the and fertilizer the helps a lot, I'm sure. With the lime and the coconut. You, Nancy, you got a tree. You got a message back from the natural resources of park and recreation people proposal. You know, I sent it over to Julie, and I have cop a copy for you. Okay. I, I didn't want to send we, it to your email. We need to review that before budget season anyway. I'd well, like to maybe... I think you and I need to get together and talk about <clears throat> how we want to spend money this coming year. Right. And, and also applying for grants. Yeah. I think we need to look at some some regrowth on the park as far as... Succession planning is... is That's all part of what she sent. Right. I would like to see that to see what they recommend. We do. That is going to take a professional, I think, to do it anyway, so they have a continual monitoring of the trees instead of, you know, just somebody just going up there and watering them once so in a while. Or, everyone else may not realize that we met with a group from the state, two women from the state, and they came and did an inventory of every tree on the park and the condition of every tree on the park. And then they have just sent back um, information on their evaluation of everything. And when Frank talks about succession planting, it's with concern for the ash trees. 
mm -hmm. that surround Huntington Place and Park Row, primarily. Um, and the fact that the ash bore is coming, and what are we going to do about it? <laughs> so we had a lot of conversation. They've made some recommendations, and then we'll come in and make some other recommendations. We'll present something to the community when we get it figured out. Yeah. <clears throat> so it was a pretty interesting day. They literally spent the entire day right. walking around the park with us, and then they went and inventoried every single tree. We now know what every tree is on the park. <laughs> And how tall it is, and how big around it is, and what the <laughs> and what the condition of the roots is, and where yeah. the splits are. And well, they, it was cool. pretty interesting. They were pretty. They they did Thorough. all that through their phone. Yeah. <laughs> also, they take a leaf and they could identify the tree through the, through the phone. Mm -hmm. <laughs> pretty funny. That's cool. 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 Well, if um, there's nothing anyone else wants to talk about, we'll just sign some bills and go. We got. I think we've got one more Zoom question. Yes. Go ahead, Rob. So, um, I, am I am I am I live here? Yep, you're good. Yep, you're live. So I sent you guys a list of questions a week or two ago about the high school building, and I got a nice message from uh, Dune saying that they needed to do some research on that. So I wondered if it's possible uh, for you to give me a date when, uh, maybe a date when you can tell me a date that uh, you'd be uh, ready to answer those questions. I'm not trying to put you on the spot or anything. I'd just like to know how we can put some official period at the end of that sentence. And you know, this is my concern about uh, public information uh, regarding that project. So I guess my, my question is, can you tell me, let's say in two weeks, can you tell me, yeah, here's the date or three weeks or whatever you want. Is it possible for you to do that? Uh, Rob, in the, uh, the last meeting that you attended for the high school repurposing, th that did not answer any of the questions? <laughs> no, it created more questions, so. <laughs> okay. Uh, so my, my concern from the beginning has been the uh, uh, providing public information to the voters about this subject. And uh, mm -hmm. and I had a num as I told you I had a number of questions about this. I'm not trying to bully you about it now. I just I'd like to know, uh, and I understand why you'd have to look into some of those questions. But if you if you said, for instance, well, we can look into it, we can tell you in two or three weeks where we stand on that or something like that, just so it doesn't kind of dry up and blow away. Blow away. Can you can you pull up those questions, Pat, and so we could just read them? So it, it, even though we can't answer them right now, they're out there, and so members of the public knows um, what what these concerns are. Can you pull them up? Or Rob, do you want to want to read them? Oh, I don't have them in front of me, but uh, and, and I don't I don't need to make a big spectacle out of this. I, you know, I think these are things that people need to talk about. This is such an important like two subject. weeks ago. Yeah. <laughs> and you can tell me, you know, we can tell you in two weeks or three weeks or whatever you want, whatever you want. But I, I think we need to talk about them. And I think uh, your discussion tonight, and also my having attended that meeting that that Pat was talking about, has has made me think maybe the questions should be changed. It's really a conversation that that I think should happen. Um, right. But I'm not trying to beat anybody over the head with it. <laughs> well, so um, I, I have them. Yeah. Do you Ready? want to read them just for the yeah. These are the questions. Number one, what do you think the next steps are if the town votes no to purchasing the high school building? And please be specific if you can. Number two, if the town votes no on the purchase of the building, do we know what our legal options are if the school board or SU decides to board up the building and stop heating it, rendering it derelict? Number three, the issue of the actual cost of heating the building seems confusing to me. We know that it takes about 18,000 gallons of fuel oil to heat the building based on the energy audit. Since my assumption is that we really only need to cover Stockbridge share of the heating costs since Rochester portion is already, I think, being paid for in the education budget, as long as the school board owns the building, can you make clear exactly how much money we expect it to cost to heat the building for the winter if we do not own the building and how much will it cost if we do own the building? Number four, can we assume 
if we do buy the building, that the education budget will be reduced by a number matching Rochester's share to heat the building now. Number five, do you believe the town needs a cultural and community life center as described in the Fairweather Consulting Feasibility Study? Number six, has the select board made the decision that one option examined in the feasibility study, a cultural and community life center supported with rentals will be the only or the preferred option under investigation by the town should the voters decide to buy the building or will you continue to examine or consider other options prior to the vote in March? I think we answered that one tonight. Does the select board expect to continue to use the existing repurposing committee in its current form to guide any further actions or research relating to the building or are you considering a second phase committee or perhaps just handling the issue yourselves. Number eight, does the select board consider the issue of the high school building one principally of money or community, or would you characterize it in some other way? Number nine, what effect would the town's securing a large bond for the high school building, one to $3 million, have on the town's ability to raise another bond in the future? for replacement or repair of, for instance, water or sewage system or a major problem with town buildings or roads or any other fiscal concerns of the town in the future? That's it. Okay. So some, some of these questions actually have been answered in, in the course of events, but in my mind, it's a conversation that needs to be had in public. These, these questions. And maybe somebody else has other questions. I don't know. But I think uh, all of these are fairly important. I'm bringing this to you as a busybody. I'm just a guy who lives in the town. And I, I don't want to take up a lot of your time or be a huge pain in the ass. But I think that this is so important and it's such a such a great financial uh, axe hanging over the town that it really needs a, a an open uh, discussion that I don't, I don't feel, personally, I don't feel has happened yet. That's that's where I that's Well, where discussion I, so. about what happens if the vote comes back at no is a little preliminary. So I don't think that I'd want to speculate on that at this time while we're still in our due diligence phase. I don't want you to answer the questions now if you're, if you're not comfortable with it. It's a discussion. I'm not I'm comfortable with it. That don't, that don't answer the question. <laughs> but at some point, I think this discussion ought to happen. Even if you're just listening to one grumpy guy and you have one grumpy guy that wants to talk about this stuff, if that's all it is, well, you know, I'm not going to go all Mason Wade on you and, and everything. I'm just, I think these things ought to be talked about. Um, can, can I just okay. mention something? Um, Rob, I don't know if you were at it, but I got minutes from a meeting sent to me that the uh, Rochester Stockbridge Unified District Board recently had with the repurposing committee and they talked about a lot of these issues. Mm -hmm. And it was one of the things that came up was the cost of heating and they had figures and everything. And I, I put that together as an article that should be in this week's Herald too. And maybe that's something that you already knew about. Yeah, I did. I did. Oh, okay. Sorry. Martha, if, if it would be helpful to you, I can email you these questions if, you know, if you want. Uh, but, but this is, you know, this is really just a conversation I, I think ought to happen and I don't want to keep everybody up late. Though. Okay. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Definitely to be continued. Yeah. Thank I guess you, Rob. The only comment yeah. is if we're going to continue it, can we put a date on it? That's all. And you don't have to tell me now. You can, you can say, yeah, we'll tell you, Rob, in two weeks or three weeks or 10 years or whatever you want. Uh, I but think I, in March of 2023, right after town meeting day, would be a good time for some of those answers to come out. Well, you know, when the people have voted, when they have voted, a big decision will have been made. Are, are the people of this town fully informed about the risks and possibilities of, of this decision? I don't think they are, they have. Yeah. When we have those uh, details in front of us, we'll share them with everybody. Um, I, I'm, I'm I will share the Facebook is... page with you as well. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. All right. Well, thank you very much. I don't want to uh, keep you up all night here. All right. Anything else tonight? Then I would move to adjourn. I second. Mm. Yeah. Thank you.